And that brings us to new business, the first item being um, payment of bills, final budget adjustments for the 2012-2013 school year, uh, closing the books for 2012-2013 school year, and the 2012-2013 ending fund balance designation. Mr. Gorder will speak to those. I think. That's right. I hope. I'm trying to catch up. $30,681,561 in expenditures of $30,648,174.49 for a net increase in fund balance of $32,387.36, which of that $1,038.64 will be designated to restricted fund balance, $31,348.72 will be uh, unassigned or uh, designated to unassigned fund balance. Uh, so then you can see the total restricted fund balance of 232 uh, 067 and that restricted fund balance is primarily money that has been put aside uh, to pre-fund post-employment benefits for staff hired on before the 2008 school year. Uh, our auditor requires us to uh, uh, designate and restrict that in that fund balance and the unassigned fund balance of four million ninety five thousand dollars is unassigned but uh, in order to uh, keep our costs on the cash flow borrowing and in order to keep our credit ratings up we need to have some sort of cash flow right now I believe our cash uh, our total fund balance is approximately 14 percent of our total fund 10 uh, budget uh, which is well within uh, uh, the recommended and the norms. Actually, if you talked about recommended, uh, you would see things that would say that uh, have enough equity in your fund balance so that a district does not have to fund balance, I mean to uh, cash, short-term cash flow borrow. In order for us to do that, we'd probably have to add another three or four million dollars to fund balance, which would push that fund balance up to probably around that 28% range, uh, and that's probably the same area that we heard earlier this year at the UW-Madison. Uh, and there's no way that we would, number one, be able to afford to do that. And uh, uh, right now, with interest rates where they're, where they're at, it's only costing us uh, just a little bit under $10,000 to short-term borrow. So at this point in time, I see no reason to uh, try to hit that $3 to $4 million mark unless somebody would tell me that the uh, Fund 21 are our gifts and donations. Again, these numbers will go up or down depending on what we get throughout the year. Total revenues is $72,356.24. Again, total expenditures of $73,516.64, which in effect had a reduction in the fund balance of $1,160.40. So we have now an ending fund balance of $76,816.73. Again, revenues and expenditures have to equal each other in Fund 27. And you can 
see there with total revenues and expenditures equaling four million five hundred eleven thousand nine hundred twenty dollars and one cents cent. Uh, as we look at Fund 29, the Native American uh, Education Grant that we get, we received about $24,416. We had a fund balance of $0.32, cents and we still have an ending fund balance of $0.32. Cents. So uh, we will work to move into that $0.32 cents next year. Uh, fund 30, 30 is our debt service. It's a combination of Fund 38 and 39. Fund 38 is referendum approved, uh, non-referendum approved debt and Fund 39 uh, is referendum approved debt. We have total revenues of $1,459,465.74 and expenditures of $1,479,582.50 for a uh, decrease in fund balance of $20,116.76 and with an ending fund balance with that $281,496.32 that we talked about earlier. Uh, food service uh, was a challenging year um, and really is something that has been uh, we've been working on over the last three years probably as we and probably even longer than that when we looked at our wellness policy many years ago and we approved that uh, and also uh, with some up and coming federal guidelines and changes that were on the horizon uh, we we, meaning myself and Mr. Bender and, and uh, the board, we looked at things we could do to uh, serve healthier lunches and, and maybe even look at doing some things to uh, implement some green initiatives. And in the end, um, I guess the best way to put it would be is that they, they didn't work out so well. So when we look at our expenditures, revenues and expenditures, you see total revenues of 100 $1,678,324.91 and total expenditures and other financing, uh, other finances of $1,824,415.47 which resulted in a net change in the fund balance of $46,090.56. That's a reduction. Of that reduction, there was planned expenses of $73,000 for food service equipment. So those, that equipment was purchased, but really the net effect of some of the changes and, and really trying to push towards healthier foods resulted in a decrease in overall revenues of $73,000. So when we look at that, we have a dilemma coming up in the 13-14 budget and we'll have to take some time to discuss that. We're probably all full, uh, fully aware of some of the uh, challenges food service programs have had throughout the year. Really talking about uh, uh, portion sizes, uh, quality of food, and many other things. And, and most of that has probably not been represented as, as really good things. Uh, there's some changes that still are on the horizon when it comes to food service. Although they won't be implemented this year, they're still sitting out there. Uh, we try to be proactive and start implementing those changes. Uh, and one of them, just for an example, was moving to a healthier cookbook. It changed our revenues by $26,000, just on a cookie. Mm -hmm. So as we talked about the finance committee a little bit, the dilemma is, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to serve a, a, a cookie that maybe isn't quite as nutritious as the cookie we served this year? or are we going to serve the cookies that our student body so much enjoyed? So, and I say that again with a smile on my face because it really gets to be a moral decision on what you're going to do. Plastic plates, for instance, if we were to go back to plastic plates, would cost us 10, or would save us $10,000. We're using a green initiative uh, tray that uh, costs about $10,000 more. So, the net effect of that is if we're going to continue doing, and this is in the big context of Fund 10 too, if we want to continue doing those things that we probably know, uh, I won't say that the kids like or enjoy because there's certainly a decrease in participation, but if we're going to continue those initiatives, they cost money. And the only way that we're going to be able to, we're fortunate to have that fund balance for this year, the only way we're going to be able to afford those initiatives next year is by transferring from Fund 10 to Fund 50, which, depending on, on what we settle on, the changes we settle on, could potentially cost $70,000 that you need to take from Fund 10 to pay for Fund 50. So what does that mean in the big picture in Fund 10? 
it means that those dollars are now competing with all those other programs. That's a decision that you guys will get to wrestle with. And, um, we've already talked about adding a, uh, uh, probably maybe a possibly a board retreat to talk about this item specifically. You don't have the have the time nor really the resources to make any decisions with that tonight. But as far as the treasurer's report, that's where we're at. Five fifty. I don't know if uh, Deb or John would like to add to that conversation. Well, I would agree. Uh, it definitely needs a, a, a bigger discussion uh, than we can devote right now. And I don't know if Mr. Bender wants to speak to it, but there's a lot of variables involved. Um, and, you know, you were talking about the cookie that cost us $26,000. And uh, it's sort of amusing, but it's representative of the, of the challenge in front of us. And... I don't think anyone, any of us, I don't, I hope we're not all um, eager to return to dumping a big pile of fries and several pieces of pizza on their plate just so we can make money. The adult lunches, I'm, I'm in favor of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Administration gets the big uh, fries and pizza. Um, but, you know, Jesse, I don't know, what's your perspective on all of this? It's a real challenge. I, it's, it's definitely a challenge, and it's a, a moral debate, and um, I guess it, it's a business, and we kind of need to look at it as a business. And, um, we want to make sure that we balance at the end of the year, so it's, it's going to be a tough decision to make. But it's different than, you know, for-profit businesses. I mean, we right. do have the welfare of the students, and uh, so I, the, the calculations are a little bit different. Yeah. That's but as you know, as, um, Mr. Gorder points out, um, it it requires us then to effectively find money in the rest of the budget to provide a program we think is healthy. And um, as I understand it, the food program in the past has been perceived as largely self-funding. Is that yes. right? Correct. And that's that's been the goal. And it's, it's been helpful because then the rest of the budget, Fund 10, we, we don't look to it to subsidize Fund 50. Well, and I think we both felt we needed to applaud Jesse also for his efforts to try and meet what we knew was coming down the pike with the federal mandates as far as the lunch programs were concerned with the schools and unfortunately we're seeing part of the consequence of that but um, we just have to I guess that's why we felt to a um, retreat maybe in order where we can really delve into what's mm -hmm. been tried what we've done you know where we want to go with this how we're going to stick with it there's a lot of moving parts I mean mm -hmm. there's the federal regulations we have to follow those then there's what we as the board and the administration thinks is appropriate for the students it's what the students like and uh, you know we, their their interests are part of the equation and so there there's just a lot of, a lot of moving parts to it mm -hmm. we'll talk about one of those specifically one of those moving parts uh, a little bit later in the agenda and that's the there's a lot of pressure and regulations coming from the federal government to big changes on the, the school uh, food service programs and they're feeling some of the pushback from it uh, actually so a lot of the regulations that we're talking about a year at this point in time uh, have either been delayed or have not been implemented yet so uh, we're just trying to kind of feel those out as we go I, I think one of the things that we really need to, to be thinking about as as we look at this is you know what is the goal of our food service program? Is it to offer the highest quality lunch at the, the lowest rate um, so that the majority of the kids take advantage of it? Uh, or is it to offer the, and, and maybe I got this a little mixed up here, but I guess the point is, is that, that we know there's kids in need and we want those kids participating and not only do we want them participating but we want them physically eating too it doesn't do a lot of, i mean because one of the, the 
the probably biggest issues that, that you saw in the media was waste. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do any good to put, uh, uh, at least for me, a lot of vegetables in front of me because I'm not going to eat them anyways. So do we, are, are we sacrificing something here that we don't know? I mean, I mean there, and again, that's the, that's the whole conversation here. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, we want to be able to offer an affordable meal for kids that, one, they want to eat to. And we can go, the pendulum can go so far on the, the, the healthy side of things that if nobody's eating, it's defeating the purpose of the program. And I think that's a little bit what maybe we're running into right now. Right. I mean, that's what you saw this year. You, between portion sizes and going to fresh fruits and vegetables, there was less interest in the meals. Is that? And, and, and the, whole the, whole grain. Grain. the whole grain and removal of some of the less healthy options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was less of a appeal there. They could just as easily go somewhere else in town and get it. So. Mm -hmm. For our high school. For our high school kids, correct. And the other thing Jesse mentioned, we're probably the only high school that has open campus in the area at this point. Another variable, yeah. So. Anyways, next. <coughs> mm -hmm. right. unless you have other questions. Well, again, I think we want to have a, a meeting devoted to sort of discussing these issues, but for purposes of the closing the books, I mean, I, I think we have a sense of the, the numbers. It was a challenging year. I, thanks for, I mean, I, I'm glad we're trying. I'm glad we're, we're trying. There's, I think there is a silver lining to it. I know you got to deal with the numbers, Jesse, and, and a 20,000 plus dollar cookie is a, it's a big deal, but I think the other way to look at it is while there were some kids that, that because of the choices that were enforced this year with the defense, ate less school lunches. There were still a, a whole bunch of kids that every every single day are in the school cafeteria eating lunch with me and everybody else who's down there. And as the year progressed, we got more and more used to the different flavors and some recipes we were able to work out as, as, as vendors work. But so it might not be a $20,000 cookie, maybe it's a $20,000 Bill that Mr. Gore had to pay to get me to eat more vegetables and fruits, <laughs> and a lot of the other kids that started to eat those too. I, I, I know that one of the big changes from last year to this year was the kids that would go back multiple times to get seconds and thirds on their vegetables and fruits. Once you've gone through the line once, you could eat as much as you wanted. And I witnessed that over and over and over again. So and there is a silver lining to this, and I would just urge us to be mm -hmm. discerning as we have those conversations. Absolutely. Thank you. So, okay. that's where we're at. And as we look at the, uh, uh, the rest fund, 72 is your uh, scholarship fund. You can see we increased about $5,709.85. Um, and then uh, fund 73 is the employee trust fund. And this was set up so that we can maximize our categorical aid. Actually, this will be an agenda item that will be I don't know if the right word is stable, but uh, it's not really table, it's eliminated. There's just no action needed on it. Um, we were thinking, well, maybe this might not be in our best <coughs> conversations with our auditor. We wanted to make sure we had it on the agenda in a timely fashion so we didn't have to publish that through further conversations. We found that it is in our best interest. So uh, having said that, um, we added about $70,000 to that fund balance. Uh, for approximate ending fund balance of three million or three hundred fourteen thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars and seventy-seven cents. Now these expenditures over here, they don't really happen in fund seventy-three. They actually happen in fund ten, twenty-seven, and fund fifty. We just have to do what's required by the DPI, and that's transfer these funds over to fund seventy-three for a minimum of 24 hours so that we can transfer them back into our account so that we can maximize our aim. <laughs> That's the rules. And then at the same time, we have to be in a minimum of 5% of the transfer that was really originally transferred into uh, Fund 73. And that's to encourage districts to move away from on your retirement benefits. We're on the pay-as-you-go, I meaning we pay we figure out what we owe this year and we pay. Versus what you saw earlier in uh, uh, Fund 10, 
where we talked about prepaying those post-employment benefits. And that transition will happen. Most of us will be long gone when that happens. It'll probably be, at least from the board, I plan on living longer than that, but it'll be around 2030, 2040. Uh, but we made significant changes to uh, those benefits. So, you know, I think we're moving in the right direction here. Uh, with that, I said it's going to be shorter than that. Uh, these are just the fund balances on a worksheet, how they change. They are the same as the worksheets. <coughs> There's a motion down here that I would ask that you pass, you know, when you close the books. Uh, motion to close the books and approve the budget adjustments, which I'll show you in a minute, and then designate fund balances as itemized above on this worksheet. They're the exact same as you've seen on the treasurer's report. They're just in their uh, designated areas. The last document then is also, which is required by uh, the Department of Public Instruction, and this is just a summary of budget adjustments um, from the budget that was adopted in April to what the actually year-end actuals were, what they ended up being. So you can see that our, uh, we had a decrease of, of in our budget of approximately $50,689.41 uh, in total. And then you can see again, these are the allocations of those various uh, retirement benefits, and you can clearly see 1240561 that was designated in one account. Through that transaction, we have to then go and journal entry these to each individual person, which then really throws off our numbers in these accounts. And this is the way it will be every year. So as we look at the budget adjustments, these are the budget adjustments, but really the budget adjustments I really focus on is what happens between October and then the ones that are approved at the April meetings because with this transaction that happens in that Fund 73, it has a tendency to wildly exaggerate what the actual adjustments are. Uh, fund 10 revenues, they are pretty accurate there. Uh, I don't really have a problem on the revenue side of things because there's nothing that's really changing it. You can see between April and now, uh, we received $18,302 less than we actually anticipated. So uh, nothing too wild going on in the revenues there. And then in Fund 27 expenses, again, because you're allocating, again, those retirement benefits, it really has the effect of changing those um, costs. Uh, revenue again because these costs and you got to do that fund transfer it has the same effect of increasing the costs or the revenues uh, really no other significant changes other than in fund 50 uh, again this is a new we had operating transfer of sixty thousand six hundred ninety four dollars this year from 10 to fund 50 and this is to cover those expenses from the uh, Retirement benefits again. This is something new this year. We have never recorded them here. That expense has always showed up in in Fund 10. So although there is a transfer, it's money that it, it's not a net change in the dollars in Fund 10. That expense has occurred year after year after year. It's just now we're required it to record it in Fund 50. So we need to transfer some money out of uh, Fund 10 to Fund 50. There's no way in budgets going forward with this change in accounts, it would be very difficult for our food service budget to not have a transfer. So this is a change that we will see, but again, I want to emphasize that expenditure has always been occurring in fund 10. Questions, thoughts? Uh, at the risk of having you throw something at me, Craig. <laughs> again, uh, going back up to the, the post-employment benefits amount, uh, in Fund 10, that $1,240,000 change. That's because you you have to start by budgeting it in Fund 10, but then at, you transfer it to 73 and move it to the other accounts so that it no, changes? No, it's because when we, we budget for the actual expense as it applies to the actual retiree on the pay as you go, we calculate how many retirees they are and what their actual expense is going to be for the year and we budget that number in one expense account at the start of the school year, okay? Then because of that transfer, once it's transferred, we then have to allocate these dollars to every individual. This, trans this formula that you need to do that is just almost unbearable to do. 
Uh, so that means we would have to start doing that transaction at the beginning of the year, then throwing those budget dollars in each of these various accounts, trying to keep track of it through the whole budgeting process. And I think it's just easier for us to be able to tell you where we stand at the end of the year in April by just having these dollars budgeted in that one account because it makes it easier to estimate where uh, salary infringes are at the end of the year rather than trying to allocate them and keep track of that. Might not be doing justice to, to the conversation. So at the end what happens is then we just take this amount and we journal entry in to all the different accounts. So the actual expenditure at the end of the year shows up here, but throughout the year it's just in that one account. Okay. Does that kind of answer your question? Kind of. <laughs> What's the total, total one. for post-employment benefits? Uh, I would have to look at that oh. account specifically. But it's pretty close to, uh, I believe, about one in a... Okay. Well, it's right there. Uh, other support services, $1,486,600. That number would represent the, the number, yeah. Okay. And that's a change. Okay. Now this number also includes some severance stuff in it too, where I'm sorry, this number over here. Okay. And that number is going to continue to increase, but it's, it's getting offset. So you say, well, how do you afford these? Because the difference between the cost of a new teacher and a retiring teacher is X amount of dollars. So typically you're able to fund that difference. Uh, up until you made those changes, it, it, you could fund it for about two to three years. I haven't really done the calculations yet on what that is now, but there's a significant difference. And especially <coughs> if it was at eight years of the rate that you retired at for insurance, you got that, that dollar, so it's worth about a combined $168,000. And four years from now, that will go to $2,000 per year of service up to 40 total years. So if it was 168 a year ago, the most somebody can get in you know, five to ten. I'm not saying this is good, bad, or indifferent. I'm just saying the most somebody will be able to get uh, in three years will be eighty thousand dollars. So as high as this number is going to peak here in about two or three years, it's going to do this. It's going to come right back down. The unfortunate part is we don't have that time to get to that point. Do some of the things you want to do today. Mm -hmm. Uh, that then that completes the presentation. You'd look for a motion to. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just okay. got tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's done when you're done. <laughs> uh, and thank you for providing the motion too. Um, I don't know if anyone else sees the motion, but I would look for a motion then to um, close the books, approve final budget adjustments, and to designate fund balances as itemized for the 2012-2013 school year. So moved. Second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to close the books, approve the final budget adjustments, and designate those fund balances as presented. Any other questions or comments? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The ayes have it, the motion carries, and um, so those adjustments are approved and the books are closed. <laughs>